Torture is a fact of everyday life. Although few cases ever become widely known, acts of torture occur in prisons and jails around the world at an alarming frequency. Fortunately, torture survivors from most countries can use the United Nations Convention Against Torture to help achieve justice. The convention is an international recognition that no one shall be subjected to torture or cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment. It requires every country which adopts it to take decisive steps to protect torture survivors and punish torture perpetrators. Imagine yourself as one of the countless numbers of people tortured every day around the world. What sort of protection and support would you need in order to begin the recovery process? Rehabilitation means a multi-professional um, approach, a holistic approach. So it's not just what healthcare means in the normal healthcare system. You need social workers, you need uh, interpreters, um, you need uh, maybe physiotherapy and all this in an integrated way. Most torture survivors develop a post-traumatic stress disorder. And it means they are in need of uh, security, that's the first thing. A safe environment, and then they are in need of rehabilitation, that's both medical rehabilitation, psychological, social, legal, whatever assistance they can need in order to overcome their, their trauma. The most important thing is that they uh, get the feeling to have their, um, their life in their hands again. In addition to protecting survivors through providing rehabilitative services, the UN Convention Against Torture also requires states to actively punish torture perpetrators. This means survivors must have reliable, effective access to the legal system and that sufficient legal resources are devoted to bringing cases against torture perpetrators. Torture is one of the most serious human rights violations, but it is not only a human rights violation, it's a crime. It's one of the most serious human rights crimes. And that's why the Convention Against Torture of the United Nations is requiring from every state party to make torture a crime under its domestic system, to investigate every individual case of torture with the aim of bringing the perpetrators of torture to justice and to punish them with adequate penalties. There are a lot of um a lot of obligations um, for European states to investigate and prosecute torture because torture is an international crime. So um, the Convention Against Torture as well as the European um, Human Rights Convention um, do establish a number of obligations for European states. To go to court and um, put the torturers to court is very important for them. We have no the uh, victims from Bosnia, the ones who have been in the um, camps there from as the Serbs, and they have been very, very badly mistreated. And um, they are now slowly, slowly getting redress or some like a pension, a small one. We have had the persons from Chile now getting very few money, but at least it is seen, okay, it's an injustice that happens and you have the right and you are a victim. Despite the UN Convention Against Torture's clear obligations, there are significant gaps between the letter and the reality of the law. One common problem is the failure of states to provide access to rehabilitative services or to secure funding for rehabilitation organizations. Imagine yourself as a torture survivor trying to deal with your torture experience and restart your life. Without the protection of rehabilitation services, how would you cope? Most of the times, rehabilitation is provided by private hospitals or special torture uh, rehabilitation centers uh, that are in urgent need of money. So 
they usually are not funded or get very, very little funds from the governments in the countries where they are operating. The rehabilitation services are not financed or very poorly financed. So we and the other few centers in Germany have to fight all the time to try to find enough money. Ten people asking for treatment a week, we have to send nine away. In order again to force states to provide proper reparation, including rehabilitation, you very often need civil litigation because states are not willing to provide that on their own. Just as states fail to adequately protect torture survivors, they also fail to meaningfully punish torture perpetrators. Far too often, national courts refuse to impose significant penalties to perpetrators, or worse, refuse to prosecute acts of torture altogether. As a result, torture survivors around the world are denied access to justice. We cannot say that um, the majority, even the majority or even a qualified minority of torture victims who end up in Europe really have access to justice. It's still unusual for European prosecutors and European courts to investigate and prosecute international crimes, amongst them torture. Uh, in diesem Fall die äh, Schuldigen Politiker sind und äh, sie haben auch in einem angeblichen demokratischen Land halt äh, dieses, äh, äh, wie man auf Englisch sagt, untouchable, äh, also dieses, äh, sie dürfen nicht Tugend machen, weil sie auch sie Lust haben und sie werden nicht zur Rechenschaft gezogen. If you speak to police chiefs, uh, to military commanders, to ministers of interior security and ask them what is the sanction that you apply if some of your own people, if they are torturing, usually they say no, no, they don't torture, but if you say let's assume that they are torturing, what kind of action do you take? And then they often looked at me and said, no, we take very strong action. And then I said, but what do you mean with strong action? And then I said, they would not be promoted for the next year. I believe that many European states um, take their obligations um, in the fight against torture serious unless it harms their interest and unless it does cost something. And that, has, that situation has to be changed. And that's, that's, that's an obligation for, for us, the lawyers and the human rights organization, to tell our politicians, but also to convince our, our societies that there is no alternative to, to, to tackle torture and to ban torture. Charles Taylor certainly never thought, uh, when he was the mastermind behind many of the major human rights violations in Sierra Leone, that he would at the end be, uh, be arrested and, and held accountable before the Sierra Leone tribunal. And, Similar, it was certainly Mr. Karadzic or Mr. Milosevic who never thought it would ever be brought to trial or in Rwanda the same. Uh, but these are very, very few examples compared to the many, many more persons, political leaders, military leaders, concentration camp commanders, police chiefs, who actually do practice these crimes against humanity and who are not held accountable. So it's still a long way to go until we can say we are fighting impunity in a successful manner. Much more would need to be done and it only depends. It doesn't depend on the, the means. We have the evidence, we, we know what's going on. It only depends on the political will of states to take action.